I'm sitting here next to Courtney, um, who is our first learner of the day, who has a question for our teacher in studio. But um, just before that, Courtney, can you tell me and the viewers at home um, what type of person you are? Uh, what's, what's your hobbies? What do you do when you're at home just chilling, if you do chill, because you're in grade 12, eh? Oh, chilling is a different story. Like, you don't get time in the trick. It's a mission. Like, your head is so full of things. You, you think you're chilling, but you're actually thinking about work. But if I had to sum myself up in about three words, it would be energy, uh, energy and more energy. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really an excitable person. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what keeps me going, sort of. And that's my advice to the matrix out there, you know, just keep working, keep going ahead. You'll get there. We're going to get there, all of us. What's, what's, your, what's your career that you aspire to get into? Now that you're in matric, you should have a general idea of what you'd like to go into from next year. Um, what I want to do is I want to go study at university and do my BCom in entrepreneurship or marketing and then see where that takes me. Hopefully go overseas now and again, travel, yeah, do that sort of thing. Yeah, please hire me. Eh? Just say, hey, yeah. there's that to me guy there. I'll give him a job. What's your question to our teacher? Uh, the question to the teacher is, what are nervous system disorders? All right, let's go right back to studio. Right, what are nervous system disorders? So clearly, we're now looking at the nervous system when things are starting to go wrong. And there are many ways in which the nervous system can uh, malfunction, collapse, lots, lots of disorders and lots of diseases. But the syllabus instructs us just to concentrate on a few. And that's precisely what we're going to do today. We get a group of disorders which we call progressive disorders. This means that they get worse and worse as time goes by. So they don't hit you with the maximum impact right at the beginning. They'll start, you'll find a couple of symptoms and progressively these diseases or disorders will get worse and worse. And your syllabus talks about Alzheimer's disease and multiple sclerosis. There are, of course, disorders that can hit you suddenly. They, the, the conditions for diseases and disorders such as stroke could be building up in your body without you even knowing about it. And then suddenly they manifest themselves, for example, in a stroke. And then there are disorders brought about by chemical interference. Now we're going to have a look at each of these in a little more detail. So. Looking first of all at Alzheimer's disease, here you can see um, quite a, a graphic analysis of what a healthy brain would look like and a brain with advanced Alzheimer's. And you can see that we've got large areas of the brain that where the nervous system itself is just not there. There are large cavities in the brain and clearly it's a degenerative disease. So this is the word that you would need to learn along with progressive. It means that it's going to get worse and worse as time goes on and the nervous system tissue itself, the neurons are going to degenerate, break down. And along with this deterioration, you're going to find that these people with Alzheimer's tend to have memory and thinking skill problems. Funnily enough, they'll be able to remember way back into their youth and, and long distance memory backwards, but they won't be able to remember what they had for breakfast. They won't be able to remember how they got to the place where they are. And so you find that a lot of these old people who suffer from Alzheimer's might get lost in a shopping center or in their home. They might go out for a walk and, and suddenly they're lost. They don't know how they got there. It takes a lot longer for them to complete normal daily tasks that you and I can almost do habitually and without thinking about it, making breakfast, making a cup of coffee, uh, suddenly they may forget where they even stored the coffee in the first place. And they would exhibit poor judgment. So a person with progressive Alzheimer's shouldn't be driving a motor car, for example, because they, they lack spatial judgment, they lack coordination, and of course, there are also some horrible mood and personality changes that are very unsettling for the family and friends around the person with Alzheimer's because they don't know how to cope with the fact that Granny suddenly doesn't remember who they are. 
Unfortunately, as we said, it's progressive and degenerative, so eventually people will become completely dependent on nursing care. They, they may spend all their time in bed. And finally, the body stops working properly and eventually they will die. Multiple sclerosis, another progressive disease. We're looking here at an inflammatory disorder which affects the myelin sheaths. Now remember, we're looking here at a nerve cell, guys. Do you remember this? Have you learned about this? All right. Do you remember that there's this myelination, this wrapping of a Schwann cell all around the axon? Do you remember that? And of course, that Schwann cell was wrapped around the axon to help propagate the nerve impulse much quicker because the nerve impulse jumped from gap to gap. Do you remember that? Now, what's going to happen if that whole myelination starts breaking down? Do you think you're going to get the impulse propagating? You're going to get problems with the way that impulse is going to propagate. And so clearly you're not going to get good communication within the nervous system itself. Nerves will not be able to transmit that impulse. And so you're going to get misfiring in the brain, um, a lack of coordination between what you're feeling and the reflexes that your muscles should be able to bring about. It affects the ability, as we've said, of the nerve cells to communicate effectively with each other. Now, rather horribly, this um, disorder is in fact an autoimmune disease. Your own body instructs itself to break down the myelin. It's, it's not caused by anything out there in the same way that at this point in time, we don't know that Alzheimer's disease is actually caused by anything out there in the environment. A stroke or a cerebrovascular incident. All right, long word, but that word describes it completely. Cerebro, we're talking about the brain. Vascular, we're of course talking about the blood vessels, that's, that's absolutely right, the blood vessels that are inside the brain. Now what happens is if there's a blockage in those blood vessels taking the blood to the brain, what else is being carried in the blood that's important for the brain to function properly? I think it's oxygen. Oxygen glucose, all the food that is being taken to the brain to keep it working. If there's a blockage, the brain is just not going to be able to work in that little area. And usually this is going to be a blockage or bleeding on the brain as a result of an accident. And we're going to see that the patient has a stroke. And as a result, that small part of the brain that was damaged and didn't receive its oxygen or its food, that small part of the brain is going to be damaged. So if it's the part of the brain that you used in order to be able to speak properly, you can see that you're going to have problems with speaking and with speech or with coordination or whatever part of the brain was damaged, you'll see problems manifest in that particular area. The final area of problem that we want to talk about or nervous system disorder relates to chemical interference. And this, very sadly, is a result of the abuse of illegal drugs that become addictive or that are addictive. Now, I think that we had things we've been talking about, Alzheimer's and MS and even the stroke, there's very little that we can do to stop those things happening to us. Yes, you shouldn't smoke, you shouldn't eat lots of fatty foods, and you will reduce your chance of having a stroke. But at this point in time, we don't know of ways that we can reduce getting Alzheimer's, or our chances of getting Alzheimer's. But as far as chemical interference is concerned, I'm sure you guys are well aware of programs out there that, that educate you about drugs and not taking drugs. Do you have programs like that at your school? Yes, we do. Yeah, and, and I really find it very difficult that any teenager would be able to say, I didn't know that cocaine was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, I, I think we're very fortunate in the society in which we live and our education system that your teachers are well aware of it. There's all sorts of programs out there, but 
still young people take drugs and the problem is that those drugs then interfere with the way nerves pass messages on to others and there's that interference and eventually if they become addicted to the drugs we see that it's not just a one-off interference but the way in which the brain works is permanently affected due to taking these illegal drugs. So, I hope that answers our question today. What are the things so it would deal in zona how to how no can how can a school say bang how fish a metric or so when you talk zona and you have implemented uh, in your approach to your studies in metric? Well, I would like to say that uh, dedication and determination are key perseverance personally because you know as you progress it gets harder and harder especially when you get to grade 11 and your marks are the most important to, thing to you at the time I would say when the day you feel like giving up is the day that you try the hardest that's that's what's helped me through to matric right now yeah. what's the biggest misconception that you had about matric in lower grades mm. that you now know more about uh, they said that grade 11 is harder than matric yeah. no yeah. never matric is hard it's there's a time frame and you know hard work in that time frame you have to be very dedicated and you have to plan those are very very key elements dedication and immaculate planning will definitely get you good results um what is your question to our teacher my question for today is what steps can you take to ensure that your brain is not injured okay. that's Cabello's question let's hook him up Right, what steps can we take to ensure that our brain is not injured? Before I start looking at some of these steps, I want to ask you guys, do you play sport at school? Yes. What do you play? Basketball. Basketball, that's right. You've chosen a very nice, safe sport as far as your brain is concerned. And I believe that you also drive a car. Yes, I do. So what do you think one of the crucial things is about driving your car and preventing brain injuries? Should you be in the very unfortunate incidence of having an accident? We must buckle up for all these. Absolutely. Okay, so what we're looking at here is ways to prevent brain injury. Use of seat belts in cars and in taxis. Anywhere that you can go, you need to make sure that you are belted in. Use of motorcycle helmets. If you are going to get on the back of a motorcycle or drive a motorcycle yourself, you need to have a helmet. And likewise, we need to look at safe sports regulations and legislation in our schools. We need to ensure that players who are participating in sports such as rugby and, and boxing, that's why I said you're playing a very nice safe sport as far as head injury is concerned, but there are so many very, very tragic incidents of young mature trick boys or grade 11 learners who are damaging themselves and even becoming paralyzed because of poor safety regulations on the sports field. Other ways of preventing brain injury, as we were speaking about earlier, making the correct life choices as far as illegal drug abuse is concerned. We were even laughing about it in the studio and we were saying that there's absolutely no reason why a young person can turn around and say, gosh, I didn't know that, you know, cocaine was dangerous or smoking weed's going to damage my brain. Of course, we all know these things and we see that many young people say that they'll only experiment once, they'll only um, take drugs once because they're in control and they can do it. And very often the problem is that they cannot stop taking the drugs and that's where the sadness lies because the further they expose their brains to some of these drugs and some of them are really really um, they designer drugs that really interfere deep down in the brain and in fact cause big black holes in the brain where memory is affected judgment and the ability to make decisions the ability to to use coordination all of those things are lost and even if teenagers 
dabble in drugs or take drugs for a while and then stop taking them, there are these long-term effects of drug abuse within the central nervous system that persist. And many adults who used drugs when they were teenagers, they find that they suffer in their adulthood uh, from poor memory, from depression that we were talking about earlier on, and from sleep disorders, that they actually can't manage their lives properly even though they're no longer taking the drugs, but the, the long-term effects continue within their nervous system. So I think, guys, the decisions that you make are, are vital. And if you find yourselves in a position where you are taking drugs and you'd like to get out of this very horrible cycle before you do any further damage to your brain, remember that there are lots of people you can talk to, teachers, counsellors. There's a wonderful organisation called Narcotics Anonymous, which you can look up on the internet, and you need to talk to somebody so that you, you look after those neurons and you don't do any further damage. Yeah. <laughs>